Pick any star in the night sky. We might know its name, what kind of star it is, and how far away it is, but we probably don't know its age. Stars don't exactly come with a birth certificate. Even for our own sun, we know how big it is, how massive it is, what it's made of, but we can't tell how long it's been there just by looking at it. Star ages might help us figure out how galaxies grow and evolve, how planets form, and maybe even assist in the search for life in other solar systems. So how do you measure the age of a star? Scientists have to estimate a star's age by looking at things like its spin and its brightness, and those things depend on where a star is in its life cycle. The average star is born from a spinning cloud of gas that collapses in on itself. The gas at the center gets so hot and dense that it sparks nuclear fusion, turning hydrogen into helium. This fuel jump-starts the star's engine. The star spends most of its life with its engine running. As a star matures, its core condenses, and this hydrogen burning zone moves toward the surface. When a star runs out of hydrogen fuel in its core, it enters retirement. The star cools down at the surface and becomes a red giant. Some stars continue fusing helium and other elements into even heavier elements before they die. And in the finale of this life cycle, smaller stars release the rest of their gas into space, while more massive ones can go supernova. A star's lifespan and its ultimate fate are set by its mass. More massive stars burn through their fuel more quickly and may only live a few million years. Less massive stars, like our sun, use their fuel more slowly and stick around for 10 billion years or more. That means two stars could be the same age, but in totally different phases of their lives. Every galaxy is littered with clusters of stars, and while stars in the same cluster burn fuel at different speeds, they were probably all born around the same time. That means scientists can ballpark the age of a group of stars by figuring out which ones have just run out of fuel. They do that by plotting the stars on a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or HR diagram. Take the Pleiades cluster in the constellation Taurus. Measure the brightness and temperature of each star and plot them on this graph. The stars that are still burning hydrogen in their cores fall along this line here. Scientists call this the main sequence. The Pleiades are about 100 million years old. All but the most massive stars are still on the main sequence. When those stars reach their twilight years, they will veer off that path and end up over here. The most massive stars leave the main sequence first. Figuring out which stars have most recently made that turn tells you that those stars have just used up all of the hydrogen fuel in their cores. Based on previous calculations, scientists know how long that should take and thus, how long ago the stars began to twinkle. If the star you're curious about happens to be in a cluster, HR diagrams are great, but it's a lot harder to gauge the age of a single star. One way is to measure how fast the star spins. Surface activity, star spots, and the spectrum of light the star emits can tell scientists a star's rotation speed. In the 1970s, astronomers noticed that stars in young clusters spin faster than stars in older clusters. That observation led to an equation that can convert spin into age, more or less. But rotation is hard to measure. Measuring the rotation rate of every star in the universe is impractical, and for some stars it's simply impossible. For now, the most accurate way to measure the age of a single star is by tracking how its brightness changes over time. Those periodic changes reflect pulses and shivers inside the star. This stellar seismology can tell us how dense the core is and how much hydrogen the star has converted into helium. The more hydrogen in the core, the younger the star. To do this, you need to point a really good space telescope at a star for a long time. That's what the Kepler Space Telescope did when it was looking for exoplanets. To the exoplanet scientists, any data that didn't show a planet was trash. But to stellar physicists, it was treasure. The Kepler observations showed something surprising. Stars eventually stop slowing down. Once stars have burned about half of their fuel, they may keep the same rotation rates for the rest of their lives. That makes spin an unreliable proxy for stars beyond middle age, and confirms that brightness provides more accurate numbers. New telescopes will follow in Kepler's footsteps, 
and could provide even better age estimates for the stars they observe. A star's age is more than just a fun fact about stars we recognize in the night sky. Better age estimates for stars in the Milky Way could help us understand the evolution of the galaxy and our own star. And of course, there's aliens. When we find life on another planet, we'll want to know how long it's been there. Knowing the age of the star can tell you roughly the age of the planet, and that can give you an idea of how long it took for that life to get going. So when you ask, how old is that star? You're asking one of the most fundamental questions in the universe. So when, when I made my first HR diagram in college as part of uh, class, that was when I realized for the first time that's the only way you can tell how old a star is. And that kind of blew my mind. I was like, that's all? That's the best we can do? Like, this is such a basic thing and you can measure. I thought for sure you could tell from like the spectrum or something, but no, you can't. <laughs> You're going to be famous. You're going to be on YouTube. <laughs>